Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, Dr. Uh, Dr. Arpipa, can you hear me now? Yes, I can yeah. hear you now. Okay, yeah, Dr. Ibrahim, I think it means he already is together with us. So I think I am now going to start the session. Okay, Dr. Arpipa. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulhu al-kareem amma ba'd. All praise to Allah, peace be upon Rasulullah and his family and companions and all of us, ibadullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. I welcome all of you to this special uh, uh, occasion, uh, especially after the Ramadan. This is uh, the Shawwal kind of gathering under uh, Islamization of unit at the Kulia of Economics. And I, I'm here happily and uh, I, with respect, I, I, I welcome our speaker, uh, Dr. Ibrahim Nohu. And uh, the topic is uh, quite interesting. Uh, where are we now? So it's, um, it, it, it seems like uh, that there are so many dimensions to this topic. You know, we usually uh, children used to ask us when we are driving, when they sleep at the car, the back, 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 uh, back seat, and then suddenly they woke up and then say, where are we now? And then sometimes, uh, uh, you know, usually the spouse asks the others, where are you now? Uh, so, so, so there are so many dimensions that what we see here in, in, in this physical and material world, uh, but at the same time, uh, we need to measure and calculate. We need to, we need to estimate where we were before and where are we now. I think that's quite interesting topic. I leave it to the speaker. So the speaker, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Ibrahim Nuhu Tahir, who Wani uh, Tarif, he doesn't require uh, introduction to all of us. I think he knows, well known, alhamdulillah. Um, so today, inshallah, we are going to have this session for one hour. I think uh, it's gonna be until 4 p.m. I think hopefully Dr. Ibrahim Nuhu can finish uh, 4 p.m. Then uh, we will have some question and answer session after four. So then uh, within 4.30, inshallah, we will finish uh, this uh, special session with Dr. Nuhu. Then inshallah, without further delay, I will pass the floor to Dr. Ibrahim Nuhu. and Dr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu fikum. Hey, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi 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 Today, insha'Allah, uh, I guess uh, 16th of uh, Shawwal, uh, uh, al-farbu miya wa thana wa which is equivalent to uh, uh, 28 uh, May uh, 2021. We'll be dealing with this uh, important topic, which I uh, do believe 
uh, Umar Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam need to be reminded about uh, this matter. Uh, thinking about this topic, I remember a book I have read uh, long ago, uh, written by Alamin Shankiti. Alamin Shankiti was uh, one of the uh, great uh, scholars that uh, the Ummah of Islam has, uh, has seen in this contemporary uh, era of ours. He has written a book called About uh, Al-Bayan Fi Ibrahim Quran Bi Quran. And he explained Quran with Quran, because that, that's the best uh, uh, interpretation you have. Quran talking about itself. So uh, that book was uh, completed by, uh, uh, that book was completed by uh, uh, his student, uh, Sheikh Afiyah Mahmoud uh, Salim. Uh, so uh, this man, I'm just trying to give uh, a bit of uh, a biography of the person. Uh, he wrote a book. Actually, that book was a lecture. Somebody converted it. They transcribed it into a small uh, book, very small book. He named the book al Islam Din al Kandi. Islam is the most complete uh, religion. Islam is the most uh, complete uh, religion. Um, Uh, Islam is the most complete religion. Islam Udin al Kamil. In this uh, book, he uh, he divided Islam into several components. Actually, ten, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, each of these uh, each of these uh, element is necessary for uh, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to succeed. One of these things that he uh, discussed is the unity. And the Subhanallah, he does it beautifully when he talks about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us when he commanded us to uh, prepare for the enemies, to meet uh, the enemies whenever it is imminent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and prepare for them. You know, he's talking about the, uh, the enemies, you know, can't just go to the battle and prepare. So he said, you should prepare. But SubhanAllah, after this, Allah SWT says, whatever preparation you are making, you need the following, which is the ayah that says, Allah. He says, Allah SWT, after asking us and advising us and commanding us to prepare for the battle, but then he says, you have to obey Allah. You have to obey the Prophet SallAllahu and he says, and don't you ever let conflict exist amongst you. Argument, disagreement, fighting each other, hating each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't you ever let this take place amongst you. Fatabshan, if you do that, you're going to be defeated by the enemy. Whatever habari hukum, and your strength will be taken by it. Uh, I mean, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take your strength from you. Whatever abadi hukum was viru, and you have to observe patience. I found it so interesting, you know, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it. And this is the reason why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right after he reached Medina, because he knows, because of the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that unity is essential. For the ummah to succeed, unity is essential. Without unity, they will never go anywhere. Before I come back to the Hijrah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let me shed light on a statement mentioned by Ali bin Abi Talib. Ali bin Abi Talib was reported to have said, Ukil to yawma ukil thawl abiyat. He said, I was eating. You know, I was, I have been eaten. I have been killed. This is what he meant. The day the white cow was killed. So they told him, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, you also you use these kind of pro proverbs? He said, Yes, these are wisdoms, these are realities. He's referring to the case of Uthman, the Allah Anhu. He said, The day Uthman got into trouble, that was the day also I was in trouble. Although physically he was safe, you know, he was saved, you know, he was safe, and but at the same time, he said that day Uthman was killed, that was the day I was killed also. Not now, I wasn't killed now. I was killed the day Uthman was killed. 
because that was the beginning of the disunity of the Ummah of Muhammad which took place and it never stopped up to date. So unity is essential. And that's the reason why the Prophet as I said, right after he reached Medina from Mecca, the first thing he, he did after building the masjid, the place where Muslims are supposed to be united, the Prophet said, the first thing he did was to construct a strong brotherhood amongst the Muslims. They need it. They used to find each other for serious reasons. The Prophet ﷺ, he knew that he cannot succeed in his mission without uniting the Ummah of Muhammad he did it very beautifully. The anger, the rancor, the enmity that used to exist amongst them was removed. Believe it or not, the Arabs, they used to fight each other for 120 years. And also in Khazraj, the Ansar in Medina, they used to fight each other for 120 years. The Prophet ﷺ closed that page. Allah SWT says, Yeah, almost going to be taken to hellfire, but Allah SWT, He granted you success and take you away from it. So Rasulullah really succeeded in that in terms of uniting the believers. Shaitan tried it best to make sure that he took the Muslim Ummah back to that degenerated situation, but he wasn't succeeding in that in that manner. They were very strong. I remember during the battle of the Bani Mustalik, the case of the Jahjah and Sinan that took place, and they are both slaves that belongs to uh, the two tribes, Al Ansar and, and uh, I'm sorry, Ansar wal Muhajiri. SubhanAllah, they fought against themselves and Shaitan was almost going to succeed in bringing back that attitude of the Jahiliya where the Muslims, they hate each other. But Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and aided him and helped him to close that page. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned several hadiths which I will be dealing with, uh, with inshallah in my conclusion, uh, which are the, the, the only solution we have to maintain the strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us. Let's have a look at the history of Islam when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first arrived. There was a time where the Prophet was alone. And then he was followed by his wife Khadija. And then Abu Bakr And then a few amongst the companions of the Prophet joined. One of them was saying that I was the fourth in Islam, the fourth, uh, the fourth, uh, the fourth person that accepted Islam from Rasulullah. But because of that strength that last one to talk about when unity is maintained. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam managed to spread Islam, you know, all the way to the Roman Empire. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reached that place, although it wasn't conquered during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it reached that place. They know that Islam exists. And after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he completed that which was begun by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and defeated the Romans in the battle which was led by by Osama ibn Zayd, the son of Zayd bin Haritha, who was killed by the Romans during the Battle of Mut. They were defeated, although the number of the Muslims was very little. But my dear brothers and sisters, this is the power of Iman and unity. In the Battle of Badr, they were very united. They are very united around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were around 313 or 14 or 15, but they defeated 1,000 who were well equipped from the enemies of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In the Battle of Uhud, they were around 700, but they defeated 3,000. Many people think that the Battle of Uhud was a defeat, but it wasn't. Abdullah ibn Abbas used to swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the battle of Uhud was a victory granted to the Prophet If you ask me to give my own analysis, I will tell you, yes, it's a defeat. But if you give a soldier, you know, an army, you give them what exactly happens, they will tell you that, yes, the Muslim won the battle. It wasn't the, the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point is, they were the minority, but they managed to defeat the enemy. Why was that? Because of two things, Iman and unity. 
is what Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala told. Atiu Allah wa atiu Rasul atiu Allah wa Rasulahu wa la tanazau attention. They maintain that unity so they succeed. In the battle of Ahzab they were united although they were around 300 of them you know at first there were so many but many of them left you know left, and left the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam doing the thing alone with a few among his companions but they managed to succeed against 10000 soldiers who came to medina with the intention of destroying medina entirely but they did not they did not succeed in that why was that iman and unity that was that during time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after that all the way you go to khaybar around 5 to 6000 soldiers and the muslims were only one point something you know 1500 to 1400 but they defeated the jew and they submitted and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them to leave the place make a comparison before i reach that with the situation where we are living in in the battle of muta they were around 3000 of them and the enemies of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were around 200000 and they won the battle i have a lot to say concerning this matter if you are not amazed with this look at the battle which was led by al arsala we were told that the muslims were only 16000 and they were fighting against 600,000 and believe it or not history confirmed to us that the muslim won that battle what was the causes of the nasr and the success unity and subhanallah very beautiful history when we read you know you know there was a story mentioned about a sister who was disrespected by by somebody although this story some uh, people said it, i mean it has some question on it but this is a very beautiful story mentioned by some of the historian that a sister was disrespected you know was disrespected in one of the uh, the, the not muslim community they disrespected her from her, because of her religion the khalifa who was a muhtasim at that time told them either you should apologize either you apologize or you i mean and you respected that woman or you should get ready to receive my army which will begin from my country and they will reach your country and they're still coming out of my uh, coming out of my country subhanallah they have no option except to respect read about harun al rashid and his conquest and how much he support he supported the islam and how much was and where the muslim reach on the face on the face of the globe he used to look at the clouds going around you should say to the clouds go wherever you want your kharaj you know your kharaj kharaj means the fruit that you're going to bear the results the outcome of you sending down the rain will be taken here to me you know wherever you go the kharaj will come back to me which shows that muslims reach almost everywhere what took them to that place unity they know that differences exist but they try to understand how to deal with the differences in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam people were not angels they used to have differences but there was no case where a different you know a difference separated between the two companions have a look at the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he told them la yusalli ahadu minkum illa fi bani qurayba nobody is allowed to pray amongst you except he when he reached the nuqrayt this is do, during the battle of the trench the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you shouldn't pray until the time you reach bani qurayt some of them when the prayer arrives on the way they said we have to pray because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the salata kanat ala al-mu'min kitabun mawtah every prayer has its own fixed time some of them said no Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said we have to reach there they have this difference amongst them so some of them pray on the way and the others they pray in bani qurayba after the time of the uh, prayer already uh, finished or when they reach the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not blame anyone 
So I just want us to understand that they have differences. But wallahi, when it comes to facing others and when it comes to hatred, these people, they are really away from that. Let me qualify this statement. If you read the house about the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has around nine wives and he left nine wives. They have differences among them. And this is natural. We already know this. This jealousy that, that jealousy that exists is part of the nature in which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala plays in human being. So they have this jealousy amongst themselves. But I just want us to understand that this jealousy amongst the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not reach the heart. In the Kitab al hiba the book of Gift in Sahih Bukhari, uh, Imam Bukhari mentioned that Aisha Anha, she has her own party. You know, having Hafsa and some other wives of the Prophet Sallallahu supporting her. And you have, on the other hand, you have Zainab bin Tijash, who is more closer than, the, uh, than Aisha to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, in terms of relationship, you know, she's from the relative of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than Aisha bin So she has her own party and Aisha has her own party. One day, they were tired of the attitude of the believers because the people understand that Rasulullah whenever he is supposed to be with Aisha his happiness will be intensified, will increase to the highest level. You'll be so happy. So Muslims, whenever they decided to give a gift to the Prophet they will wait first until the time they are with uh, I'm, I'm sorry, he is with Aisha then they will go and give the gift because they know he will appreciate it more because he is so happy. So the rest of the wives realize that. They send Fatima anha, to the Prophet wasallam, to tell him that he has to be just and he has to be fair. And he has to tell the Muslims they should give the gift randomly. They shouldn't wait until the time he's with Aisha then they give something. What is this? Fatima radiallahu anha went and she told the Prophet about their request. The Prophet smiled and he said, Fatima, do you love what I love? She said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said, Fatima, love this one. He pointed at Aisha. She said, and then Ya Rasulullah. She left and told uh, the rest of the wives that uh, she regretted you know, for asking him and she would never go back to him again. They said, Umm Salama, she also went to the Prophet Sallallahu and the same happened. Until the time Zainab radiallahu anha bin Tijash, she got annoyed. She went by herself, and she found Aisha with the Prophet Sallallahu and she talked, talked, talked against Aisha. She talked so much. Aisha radiallahu anha got tired of what she was saying about her, you know, she got tired of what, what the woman was talking about her, So she said, She said, and I look at the face of the Prophet to see, does he mind if I reply her? So very good lessons that need the sitting by itself. She said, I look at the face of the Prophet to see, does he mind if I reply? Say no. And then when I see that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't mind any, any, uh, anymore. So then I replied her with some part of her words until the time she kept quiet. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at Zainab and told her, who told you you can touch Aisha and, and live in it, or something of this nature. I decided to bring this so that you will understand the nature of the way they live physically. But does that reach the heart? No. It never reached the heart. How do I know that? When Abdullah ibn Ubay bin Salu, during the battle of uh, Banil Mustalib, you know, when Abdullah ibn Ubay bin Salu, he told uh, the, 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 the people of the Medinan community that Aisha radiallahu anha committed zina when he elder did that. Abdullah ibn Ubay bin Salu said that Aisha committed zina when he elder did that. He wanted to break the unity, you know, and the Muslim to separate them around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to take them away from him. 
to put a doubt in the family of the Prophet Sallallahu And the idea was not Aisha. You know, Abdullah ibn Ubay bin Salud doesn't care about Aisha. But he knows that touching the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not easy for him. And if he cannot touch the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let him touch his family, his honor and dignity. Because when he touch Aisha, he's touching the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indirectly, he's dealing with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew about that. So, Abdullah ibn Ubay bin Salu uh, accused Aisha of committing zina with Safwan ibn Muaddi. He said she committed zina. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was waiting for Allah's water to see something. But Allah's water decreed that Aisha is going to be tested and the believers will be tested so that, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi will be tested so that everyone will know how to deal with this issue and also the unity amongst the Muslims will be strengthened. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uh, Subhanallah. He said, how come? Why not when you heard about the accusation against Aisha radiallahu anha, why can't the believers think about themselves? You know, he said, Amfusihum. so he made them like one body. He said, why can't they think about themselves in a good way? So it's like they're all one body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, why can't they think about themselves in a good way. Why can't they falsify? They know who is Abdullah ibn Salu. How is it possible to find somebody amongst the Muslim who can even think of trusting Abdullah ibn Salu? So the Prophet Allah was waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say something. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying anything. It was really a big test for Aisha. Aisha said, I cried when she knew about the story. You know, it's a very long narration in Sahih Bukhari. Aisha said, the moment I knew about this story, he said, I cried. She was sick actually when they came back from that battle. She was sick, so she did not know what was going on. But she perceived that something is going on wrong in the life she used to have with the Prophet Sallallahu Because she said, whenever I'm sick, the Prophet Sallallahu used to treat me like a baby. Let her come and sleep on him. Let her come and sleep next to him. You know, the Prophet ﷺ used to be really next to her. So, but this time around, she said, I see that the Prophet ﷺ was not treating me in that way. I did not know what happened. Until the time a woman called Umu Mista, she told Aisha anha what happened. And Aisha said, my sickness, the fever increased. She said, I cried until the time I started to feel that my heart is going to explode. She said, I cried until the moment that all the tears I have finished. I'm crying, but no tears is coming because everything finished. So for days she has been crying. That was a test from Allah SWT to elevate her in ranking, and she passed that test. But the point is, when the Prophet ﷺ started to ask people, he went to Ali bin Abi Talib. He says, Ali, what do you think about this case? Ali bin Abi Talib told him, Ya Rasulullah, that was nonsense. There is no, nothing except good in your family. But at the same time, Ya Rasulullah, I don't even see the reason why you keep worrying about this. You know, you worried so much, you know, you worried so much about it. He said, I don't, I don't, I don't see the reason why you are like that. Ali bin Abi Talib told him, Ya Rasulullah, when the cells here are He said, sisters, other than Aisha, there are a lot. He means, Directly, why do you if you if you cannot relax, you know, why do you stay with Aisha since you cannot relax? Let her go go back to her house. You know? and subhanallah, no woman will accept this, you know, because indirectly he said the Prophet will not look for another woman. If you still have doubt, you cannot relax to us. There is no doubt Aisha is okay. Aisha doesn't have any problem. That was accusation, that was false, that was a lie. But if you cannot relax, then Allah just let her go. That's why when Aisha heard about this. She stopped talking to Ali bin Abi Talib, even to mention his name, she didn't. And subhanAllah, she did not have hatred against him. But she stays away from mentioning even his name. How do I know that she did not have hatred? Because she used to send people to him to get fatwa. Whenever somebody asks her for something, she would say the best person to give you uh, fatwa on this, you should go to Ali bin Abi Talib. So, we're talking about Aisha and Zainab. To prove that the hatred, I mean, that the jealousy did not reach the heart. 
It is physically happening based on the nature that Allah SWT has created in each and every one of us according to our gender. But it did not reach the heart. The Prophet Sallallahu asked Osama ibn Zayd. Osama also praised Aisha and gave a very nice comment. And the Prophet Sallallahu amongst the wives, he selected Zainab because Zainab was the, 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 the one who is opposing Aisha always, all, almost all the time. So the Prophet Sallallahu went to her. He said, Zainab, what do you think about Aisha? SubhanAllah. Everyone will say that Aisha is in trouble because now, uh, now Zainab will have her opportunity to take revenge. The Prophet said, Zainab, what do you think about Aisha? Zainab said, Ya Rasulullah, that was nonsense. To be honest with you, I have never seen you know, one of the best people I met in my life is Aisha. SubhanAllah. Aisha radiallahu anha said, I cannot forget this for her. You know? Regardless of what is among them, but the heart is together. And wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the only way for the Ummah to succeed and to maintain their strength. That's power that was given to the believers during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they were able to defeat everyone was based on two things, as I said, Iman and unity amongst them. That's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ of the side of the non-believers, part of, part of them is the protector of the other person. They are awliya. Wali means somebody who protects, somebody who supports. They always support each other. SubhanAllah, even in our time, we already recognize that. Without mentioning specifically about places, you know, look at the war in Afghanistan, look at the war in Iraq, look at the war in Syria, look at the war in wherever it is taking place. And look at the nations of Kufr. They all unite themselves. They all unite themselves, regardless of their differences. But when it comes to faith in Islam, they all come together. This is a Jew, this is this, this is that, this is this. They all come together and support directly or indirectly each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they maintain this unity. That's why they succeeded partially in their success. But at least they maintain that one. Allah says, إِلَّا تَفْعَلُهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ of a certain kabir. If you're going, if you're not going to practice and to observe the same thing they are doing, to convict natural philosophy of a certain kabir, there's going to be a great fitna on earth and a great corruption is going to take place on earth. And that's the reason why he says, Allah SWT says, Don't you ever have these conflicts? and segregation amongst you because your strength will be taken away from you and you will be defeated by your enemy. Allah says, maximize your patience when dealing with each, with each other. So we need this unity in order to maintain that prestigious nature, uh, nature that the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to, used to occupy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the companions one day, he says, in the Mankana Qablakum, the people that came before you, the Jew, they were divided among themselves uh, 70, uh, 71 sects into 71 sects and uh, groups. The Jews, they were divided into 71 sects and groups. The Christians were divided into 72 sects and groups. He said, my ummah will be divided into 73 sects and groups. So it becomes part of the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this division is going to take place. In Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَا جَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَلَا يَزَلُونَ مُخْتَلِفِ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish, he will make people ummat al wahida They will be upon one nation. In the way they used to be before, one nation with no differences among them. You might have sins, but the unity was there. Up to the time of Nuh alayhi salam, this is when you have two parties, the parties of Iman and the parties of Kufr. And the segregation kept on taking place in so many segments. You know, up to the time of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa where he mentioned that we're going to be divided into 73 groups and sects. 
So Allah SWT says, if you wish, you will not let this happen. People will remain with differences. We should be aware of this. Differences among people will keep existing. That's why the problem is not about having differences. The problem is about how to deal with the differences. Allah says, وَلَا يَزَالُ لِمُخْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ Except those whom Allah SWT bestowed His mercy. وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ Some people think that وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ is referring to the differences. He created them so that they can be far. No, Allah did not create people to come and be far from each other. وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ is referring to the mercy of Allah SWT. He created them to show mercy for them. And one of his mercies upon, upon the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu is the unity that he granted the first generation of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu which we fail to maintain those principles which were maintained by the first generation and the early generation, which earned them and granted them the unity. And that's why the disunity happens among us. So back to that hadith of the Prophet sallallahu he said, my ummah is going to be divided into 73 groups and sects. He said, Kulluha in the wahid. All of them will be taken to help except one. All of them will be go going to help except one. They ask him, Ya Rasulullah, if this is the case, then which one is that person, that, uh, that group that will not go to, to help? And subhanAllah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not give them a name. I want us to focus on this because if we go out of this lecture with this lesson, it's more than enough. You Allah, if you go out of this lecture with this lesson alone, it's more than enough for the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to succeed in Allah ta'ala in coming back to the unity. He did not give them a name. Nowadays, how many names we have? So many, hundreds and thousands of names, much more bigger than the number given by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said 73. Do we have only 73 groups and sects? No. That's why the 73, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he meant by them, those who have big influence. Most likely the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking about the one that is having big influence. Otherwise, if you're going to be talking about small, small, small groups, we have hundreds of them. And these names and titles that exist in the Ummah of Muhammad This one is Ikhwani, this one is Sufi, this one is Salafi, this one is this, this one is that. You know, so many names. And my dear brothers and sisters, having name is not an issue. But making this title, you know, uh, uh, I mean, having this title, making you looking at your brother as somebody who is your enemy, this is the problem. It's not about having the name. We don't need that name at all. Wallahi, we don't need any name, we don't need any title about, apart from that which is given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and confirmed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ Participate in jihad, which is the defense system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted this ummah to protect the religion first and foremost and to protect the Muslims, Muslim communities wherever they are. Allah says, Jahidu fillahi haqqa jihadi, huwa jitabakum mama ja'ala alaykum fi al-deen min haraj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who chose you, selected you, and make you the best nation, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Antum Mufuna Sabaina Ummata Minil Umam Antum Khaibuha wa Akrabuha Allah. You are the completion of 70 nations among the nations created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the best wa akrabuha Allah azzawajal. You are nation number 70, but at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you the best. So we are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the benefit of humankind. Allah SWT has never placed difficulty in this religion. Allah SWT is the one who called you uh, The word huwa is referring to Allah SWT, not Ibrahim Allah is the one who called us Muslim. 
unfortunately nowadays, you have somebody who said Islam is not enough. SubhanAllah. He said Islam is not enough. And he called, he came, and he was advertising his group and his sect. He said, I hope everyone is like this. One of them said, no, I'm not. He said, who are you? He said, I'm a Muslim. He said, Islam is, Islam is not enough. Wallahi, that's why we get lost. Because I believe Islam is not, if I believe Islam is not enough, you believe Islam is not enough, I have to affiliate myself to your group, to your sex, to your organization for my religion to be accepted. And I cannot be correct unless if I take from your share, if I don't take from your share, I will be upon the bottom. All of these things that you have heard, we have heard them a lot. We totally separated. We totally separated. And why is it separating us? The names and the titles. We forgot the practice. You see, a name, a person calling himself a righteous person, but if you look at his attitude, he's totally away from the principles of righteousness. So Rasulullah in that hadith, when he talks about the, the, the differences amongst the Muslims, you know, he said the only one who will succeed and will be taken to paradise. They ask him, Who is that? He says, and Jama'ah. I know Jama'ah is referring to the unity. And also, he said in another place, he says, The one who follows my way and the way of my companions. Wallahi, I found this so interesting. I really love this hadith. I really love this hadith. Because nowadays, if a person, if I don't call myself Sufi, if I don't call myself Tablighi, if I don't call myself uh, Salafi, if I don't call myself Whatever I'll do, I'm following the Sunnah of the Prophet so precisely. I will be amongst the people of uh, the deviation according to that sex and this uh, sex. But here, the Prophet sallam, when he talks about success, and the only one who is loved by Allah subhanahu wa taala, he says, is a person who is upon my way and the way of my companion. He says, a person who is upon my way and the way of my companion. The enemy of Allah SWT has succeeded in dividing us because they understand that as long as the unity exists among the Muslims, they will never succeed. That's why Abdullah ibn Sabah and Yahudi came. Those were the first group who emerged. So he came, he was a Jew, and he accepted Islam hypocritically because he realized that fighting Islam with sword and weapons is a waste of time. He can never succeed in that because he read the history and he understand what, uh, what it's meant to fight Muslims with sword and weapons. But he knows that he can uh, uh, divide and destroy Islam from inside. That's why he accepted Islam and joined the Muslims to destroy them from inside. So he created that a group who claimed to be loving the Prophet and his, and, and his relatives. You know the one that I'm talking about. He brought them into existence and they went on until the moment where they started claiming that Ali bin Abi Talib is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that, we have the Khawarij, after that, we have the Murtazila, after that, the, 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 the differences among the Muslim kept on increasing. We have so many sects, some of them, we, they even exist in this contemporary year. People have been writing and they're still writing about the differences and the sects amongst the Muslim community. And that's the reason why you can see the enemy is taking us one after the other. It never happened. Nobody thought of it. They never think of reaching this uh, situation. But the Muslims are so strong. When the Muslims are united under one leadership, you know, and they themselves also in the community, when you come down, almost everyone is loving each other. No hatred, no enmity. The Prophet ﷺ gave them a very strong and powerful principle that unites the Muslim and bring them together. The world is still confused and amazed with the way the Prophet ﷺ are used in uniting the Muslim nations. Nobody ever think of something to happen within this short period of time. But in our time, in almost every country, you know, people of the same nature you find these differences among the Muslims. This one is cursing this, this one is cursing that. 
How do you expect us to win against our enemy if we cannot unite ourselves? I see you as my enemy. Even the salam, just because I belong to uh, a sect or group, even the salam to say to another person, we don't do. Allah says, I live in, in, the, in the place, I witness a moment whereby there are some people even to say salam, they don't. SubhanAllah, we share the same aqeed with them, we share the same manhaj with them, we share the same faqr with them, we share the same madhab with them, we share the same uh, thing with them, you know. I have been in several communities and I have witnessed this. To say salam, people are not even saying salam to you. Up to the moment, some people are thinking that the salam is only said by a certain group of people. Because for that uh, person, for you to be righteous and for you to be good, you have to create an enemy. Somebody told me the other day, is it true that as a Muslim, you must criticize others? I said, I only know this to be practiced by the Jew. Those people who said, ummah, they said, we are a nation. We cannot survive and we cannot live except with an enemy. When an enemy die, we will create another enemy. So all of these things, I think we already know them. And as I mentioned many times in this uh, sitting of ours, that there is no way for the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to succeed unless if we go back to the method used by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the only thing. I really have to affiliate myself to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nowadays, we affiliate ourselves to who? To others. And this is the beginning of the failure. And this is the beginning of the failure. The more you affiliate yourself to others, you attach yourself to others and neglect the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the more far you will be taken from the, from the truth. And this is very dangerous. And this is exactly what happened to the, to the people before, before uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sheikh Lissam bin Taymiyyah was mentioning something about the reason why the Christians and the Jews lost almost everything. Because they focused so much on personalities, and they forgot the principle given to them and the book given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they witness a time whereby the personalities they're depending on get to be corrupt. They're all corrupt. And those personalities started lying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in certain things in the book which are not part of it. But unfortunately, nobody in the community knows what the book is all about. How do you know if somebody added something in it, and how, how do you know whether somebody added something or did not add anything, you know, in the book? Alhamdulillah, this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi has been protected from this type of evil to take place in, in us. Allah SWT says, We have sent the Quran and we are responsible to protect it. And Allah SWT did protect his book up to date. But that fact should be remembered always that focusing so much on personalities can be the first path we're taking to to feel like life. Personalities and scholars, they're supposed to be meant, you know, for what? Interpretation, guidance, but they cannot be used as a reference, whereby you see the ayah, you see the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but you say, no, my chef said, said otherwise. Up to the moment we have heard about somebody who said, any ayat or Quran, any Quran or hadith of the Prophet that goes against the statement of our Imam, you should know that that ayah or hadith is abrogated. SubhanAllah. Equating his shaykh with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or even better. SubhanAllah. So the people of the past, they used to focus on, on the principle. And we neglected those ones. We focused so much on the scholars. And uh, I only believe in my shaykh. I don't believe in, in the other ones. If something did not come from my shaykh, I would never take it. How is it possible for us to, uh, to succeed? You know, I told somebody, fear Allah. Wallahi, this one, in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu I told somebody, fear Allah. He said, I don't want to hear this from you. 
I said, somebody tells you, fear Allah. He said, yes, I don't want to hear this. I knew what was, what, what was between me and him, nothing. I did not even know him. I was just sitting down making my tisbih. I was about to finish the tisbih, you know, and then they, they started praying for the janazah. I said, okay, my tisbih is all about to finish. I just quickly finished the tisbih, I joined the salah. The man, right after the salah, he got back. Why did you finish your tasbih? I said, why not? <laughs> SubhanAllah. Janazah at first, look at jahl, look at ignorance. You know, Janazah at first is from the fire. As long as there are some people who are doing, even if I do not pray, there is no blame on me, Islamically. I told him, our scholars said, when you are about to finish something and then the prayer of Janazah is established, you quickly finish the dhikr, you know, you're about to finish your dhikr, quickly finish the dhikr and join the prayer. Then you get two things, you know. SubhanAllah, the man was so annoyed, he doesn't want to accept. I told him, Taqillah, go and study. He said, I don't want to hear this from you. I have Sheikh so and so and so, he's the only one who can tell me this, you know, SubhanAllah. I was like, what happened to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I have witnessed all of these uh, things, you know, but I wish time is permitted you know, to share many of them with us. We really need to go back to the real Islam and the true Islam whereby the Sunnah and the Book of Allah Swatter is giving the preference rather than personalities. As I said, uh, the time we're living in, we share the same aqidah, the same thing, but just because our scholars, you know, the source of information differs, I take from this person alone and I don't take from the other one and I hate you because I don't see you with my sheikh, you hate me because you don't see me with, with your sheikh. And all of us should know and wallahi, if this is the attitude, we're going to regret. I have no doubt that if this is our attitude, we will definitely regret. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the questions in the grave, as well as the hereafter, is going to be focused on two things. Righteous deed and the way you follow the Prophet Allah will never ask you about Malik. Allah will never ask you about Imam Shafi. Allah will never ask you about Abu Hanifa. Allah will never ask you about Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, Sunan Thawri. Allah will never ask you even about Abu Bakr or Umar. But Allah SWT is going to ask you about Rasulullah. And guess what will be, what will be the questions in the grave about Rasulullah? That is a question which is very specific. The question says, what is the relationship between you and Rasulullah? And you have to give them specific answer. What is that answer? Huwa Rasulullah ja'ana bil bayinatu al huda fa'aman nabihi wa tabaka. He's the messenger of Allah and he brought evidence and signs and he brought uh, also the Quran fa'aman nabihi wa tabana. We followed him and we believed in him. By Allah, how is it possible for a person to answer this question in this way if he is not among those people who precisely follow the Prophet throughout their lives? We have to take this matter seriously. The only person that Allah SWT is going to be asking you about is Rasulullah. But then how is it possible for me to favor somebody over the Sunnah of Rasulullah? How is it possible for the Ummah of Muhammad Allah, to be fighting themselves just because this one wants to follow this and this one doesn't want to follow that, this one wants to do this, this one doesn't want to do that. And on the Day of Judgment, Allah Taala will ask you also the same two questions about your deed and about your relationship with the messenger, whoever that messenger might be. What was your relationship between him? Prophet in the hadith of Ali Rabad ibn Sariya, he talked to them about the fitna that will happen. One of them is the one that we live in. Because to me, one of the greatest fitna that the Muslims are not, uh, uh, and the Muslims are living in nowadays is the disunity among Muslims. And we should be realistic. This disunity exists everywhere. Amongst the family members, in the working industry, you know, wherever you walk, and sometimes it's so funny. Wallahi, it's so funny. We all agree to come and walk under one umbrella in the company. It is supposed to be a family place. You Allah, it is supposed to be a family place. It is so shameful to find, to agree 
and to accept fighting your Muslim brother or sister who is walking with you in the same umbrella. Patience and understanding the nature of each and every one of us is necessary. This is where the victory is taken. I see my brother with respect. When he made a mistake, I fixed him in a very humble and nice way and using wisdom because we are trying all together to maintain a success and to provide, to make sure that the mission of the place, wherever you're walking, succeed as long as the mission is, is correct. And that's why many industries, many company, companies fail because the workers and the employees and the management that is no good mood. This one is not respecting this one, this one is not respecting that one. So how do you expect a people to succeed where there is no respect amongst them? That is no way for success to take place in a company in an organization, in a community, as long as the members that are respecting themselves. We have an objective that we're trying to reach. I don't agree with that objective, or I agree with it, but I don't agree with you participating in achieving that objective. How do we succeed? We're having this conflict among us. So that's why this should be taken away. That's issue start from Salam. If I'm to meet my brother, I say Salam to me, he replied me with a very angry face which is totally unacceptable and against the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu He smiles and he says, Salam. He's the best of the best. You know, he's the best of the best. But when you meet him, they said he says Salam to you before you say Salam to him. You were supposed to say Salam to him, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will quickly say the Salam because of its importance. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he says, Wallahi, you will never be able to go to paradise until you believe. And you will never reach the faith of faith and believe until you love each other. And then he said, he said to them, can I guide you upon something? Can I guide you to something in which if you are to do it, you will be loving each other? They said, yes. Ya Rasulullah. He said, Afshu salam Straight the salam amongst you. It is one of the greatest and the strongest tool and the most powerful tool that Allah SWT placed in the Ummah of Muhammad SAW that brings the hearts together. But nowadays, do we use, do we do it? And you're talking about you, I live in UI for almost 18 years, but that is, subhanAllah, you don't see this attitude. You know, UI, you can say that 99.9999% of the members in UI is Muslim. You know that from your mahalla or from your office or from wherever you're coming right after you get to UI, how many rewards you will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The moment you say salam to a person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you the minimum of 10 rewards. Minimum of 10 rewards. And if you can calm down your, your, your anger, you know, you become humble, shake his hand. The Prophet said the sins that you committed, you know, will be dropping down just like the way when the wind shakes, you know, the, 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 the tree which is dry, the leaves will be falling down. This is the way Allah SWT will be taking away your sins. You smile to your brother, Allah SWT will grant you reward for that. I think, brothers and sisters, Allah, your heart shouldn't have a room for enmity against anyone. Your heart shouldn't have a room for hatred and vengeance or revenge against anyone. Imam Shafi said, he said, when I understand that, the only thing that helps me to relieve my anger and depression, I mean, to uh, grant myself comfort, you know, the only thing that supports me in this regard is patience and forgiveness. He says, I forgive everyone. I don't go back to my house carrying somebody in my house. Whenever somebody does something to me, I forgive. You know, that is a, a principle that says, come out again to die. And we, especially when we adopt also the other hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that as long as I'm living with others, I try to manage myself, control myself, control my, control my words, control my behavior, control my attitude, understand how to behave to, towards others. Deal with them with good, with good manners. Try to avoid making errors and mistakes against them. That's what is mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, He said, he said, stay away from something. You know, he said, He said, try your best not to do anything that you will need to go and apologize to others. But this 
respect has to come. Otherwise, the Ummah will remain in the way they are. These are not my words. These are principles given to us by the Sharia. Either we unite ourselves or the, the status we are living in will remain until the time we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this unity has its own principles. As the Prophet mentioned, that the only thing that unites us is the practice of the religion. In that hadith of al ibad when he talks about the fitan and the calamities and the trial and the test and whatever is taking place nowadays, when he talks about them, the Prophet was uh, asked by his companions, Ya Rasulullah, what is the way out? The Prophet said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al Follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. And those who follow them in righteousness. That's the only thing that can unite the Ummah Muhammad. You know, Malik did it very beautifully. And he made the life easy for us. When he said, he says, you should know that this Ummah, very simple concept. He said, you should know that the last part of this ummah he's talking about us will never be reformed and fixed except with that by doing that which fixed the first and the early generations we really need to read the history and see how did those people manage to succeed my conclusion i really advise us to look and revisit this matter again what is happening to palestine and iraq and yemen is an example of this unity that is Taking place in the Muslim world. Believe it or not, when the enemy was killing and bombing and uh, killing the sisters and, and the brothers, and, you know, and the kids, especially women and the kids in Afghanistan, they told us almost 500,000 died during those airstrikes. When they were killing them, believe it or not, somebody said amongst the Muslims that they deserve it. SubhanAllah. Wallahi, I couldn't understand. This person, somebody said they deserve it. The Muslim brothers and killed and sisters, they're burned. And just because they are, they're having some differences between you and them, you know, said they, they deserve it. Somebody said they were affected by, 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 by this calamity because they're committing innovations and all of these things. SubhanAllah. Who is going to say this amongst the companions of the Prophet? This is just an example of how much disunited we are. That's why the enemy can have time and come and fight us because if there is unity among us, wallahi, they will never succeed. The Jews, they will never do what they're doing in, in, in Palestine. But we are reduced to the lowest level. We neglected them completely because we have differences of opinion concerning how to deal with them. We give them so many titles. We forgot that this is life. But at the end of the day, we're just waiting for the time whereby if the enemy destroy them and kill them, you know, and, and some, many of them are injured, then we come and collect charities and give them. That's the only thing we're doing nowadays. There is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. But the best support to give those people is to unite themselves, is to unite ourselves. And to make sure that we stopped the root cause of that evil that was on them for almost 60 years, for almost 60 years. There was no battle in Islam that lasted for, I mean, for this, uh, uh, I mean, number of years. In some battles between the enemies and the Muslims, it takes only a few hours to finalize and finish. So all of these things will never be taken away from us until the time we unite ourselves and starting from the unity among the family, the unity in the industry, the unity in society. And how to do that? The Prophet said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al Khulfa al Rashidina al Mahdiina abdu alayha bin Nawad. Wa iyakum al Mahdi Fatim. That's why there is a lot of call you know, from so many uh, uh, people who are concerned. But unfortunately, they all miss the target. The only call that succeed is a call which is similar to that of Rasulullah. Because there is nothing that has the capacity to unite the Muslims except one thing. And that's the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet. We have to unite ourselves 
around this because everyone respect, respect Rasulullah, everyone respect, respect Allah SWT and the book of Allah SWT. If I call you upon following my chef, you will not agree. If you call me to follow your chef, I might not agree. Is who we are. But if I call you to follow Rasulullah, you have to agree. If you call me to follow Rasulullah, we have to agree. Why can't we come back and surround ourselves within the sunnah of the Prophet And after that, respect our chef and understand that we are duat. And we should understand the fact that differences among us will remain and they will keep on remaining. And this is not a problem to have differences among the believers. It's not a problem. But the problem lies when these differences let us, you know, when they lead us to have enmity and rancor and hatred amongst us. This one has to be kept aside. When my brother differ from me in an opinion, my job is to go and visit him and guide him and talk to him in a very humble and nice way with the intention of conveying the message and trying to see what kind of evidences he has. Well, Shafi said, whenever I debate a person, I will always wish that the truth comes from him to see my opinion being wrong, not his. That's why they succeeded, you know. Nowadays, I already believe that my opinion is always right and you are always wrong. So when you talk to me and trying to convince me, you know, that your, my opinion is wrong, I'm not even listening to you, as somebody told me. He told me, he told me, Ibrahim, he said, he said, when, when, uh, when, when we defer, we used to be in a situation when we defer from a person, we don't even want to hear what he said. The people of the past, they're not like that. So following the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first key to success in the sunnah of the Prophet sallam. And secondly, respecting each other respecting each other this one is really necessary and thirdly uh, doing things which will in, increase the love among us and the one i propose is the one that is proposed by Rasulullah, which is to increase the amount of the salam we say to each other and uh, when i say the salam i'm talking about the good salam salam with smiling not salam with angry and dry face this one doesn't take us anywhere and when you say salam, please, if Allah SWT wish that we will see the end of this coronavirus, inshallah, soon we will see it, please develop the concept of shaking hands. Brother with the brother, a sister with the sister, shake hands. Wallahi, it brings good to, to the Muslim community. It reconnects, you know, the Muslims uh, back to the sense of uh, unity which used to exist in the time of the Prophet So I guess this is more than enough for us understand the cause of our problem and also the solution. The solution is very simple and it is always like that, but it is up to us to put it into practice and action. So following the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala precisely according to the understanding of the companions of the Prophet and the righteous uh, 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 predecessors, I'm talking about the first three generations, the generation of the Prophet the generation of uh, the, the companions and the generation of the Tabi'i as well as the Atba Tabi'i and also respecting everyone and saying salam to each other. And the evening light Allah, this unity will come back to the Muslim Ummah and we will be able to maintain the strength and the prestigious nature which the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to live in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and it shows the time this, that this unity will come back and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our weaknesses and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring back the strength to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help and support the Palestinian people, the people in Yemen and the people in Iraq and the people in Afghanistan and where and the people people in, uh, the, 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 I mean, every place on the earth, wherever Muslim is suffering, last month to help, on, help them to, uh, to be protected and to get rid of the enemy and the last month to liberate them from uh, the enemy and the evil uh, uh, attitude of the enemy in the Hubi Kulli Jameel and Kafir. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu, Ustaz. Thank you very much for a quite interesting talk. I think all of us enjoyed. Um, it's, it's quite important as well to understand. Uh, the last point is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this is the core idea in Islam that So this is Kitabullah wa Sunnatu Rasuli. Uh, so with that uh, note, I think uh, uh, that the most important thing what I, I learned from uh, 
Dr. Nuhu is actually uh, the, the, the present, what we are. Actually, the, the question comes in the, in the topic today, where are we now? So I think uh, if you look at the word are, A-R-E, it refers to the present tense. So, so are, are we completely Muslims today? So that's that, that the real question, so that if the present tense is good, it's complete, then I think the future tense will be all right. So I think uh, that's, that's quite interesting to learn everything uh, that you said, Alhamdulillah. I also uh, would like to tell you, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, while you were, I think, uh, mashallah, our big scholars uh, of our, 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 our kulliya, subhanAllah, I really, uh, they are the amazing scholars. I'm really happy to be among them. So they were discussing a lot in uh, comment, comment section. So if you go to comment, it's all right. You don't have to go now. Let me just, uh, because, because you, 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 you were talking, I, I didn't want you to uh, go there and read. Let me just give you some ideas that uh, some fascinating ideas. You know, they were saying that uh, they were referring to the Ottoman fall. I, I, I have write it down in the paper. They were talking about the Ottoman fall. And then they were talking even uh, the Sultanate Malacca in Malaysia. You know, even the Mughal in India, the reason why been, they, they were falling is because of the disunity. Yeah. And then even uh, our scholars, they were discussing about the masjid today that we are praying. It's supposed to be a place to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but today, it's not the place, it's becoming not the place to fear Allah. It, it's a kind of a wrestling going on between committee members, uh, the, the Pengurusi all. So this is also another disunity that they were referring. And also, um, Alhamdulillah, many comments, also a few questions. So I, I able to uh, extract few questions. I just, I will give it to you all of them together. Then maybe you can answer together all of them. So uh, some of them ask, is it that do we need to restore a Khilafah system? Is it necessary to restore it in order to bring the unity? Or is it today that we have OIC? Is it a form like organizational leadership? It, do you think it could uh, it could act on behalf of a Khilafah system that uh, we are referring? And uh, and another thing that they wanted to also ask, uh, what are the strategies uh, to avoid uh, the disunity of Muslims? I think pretty much you covered it. Uh, but this is one uh, question uh, I think you can actually answer to it. Then I have another one which is actually a different uh, set of questions. Please. Okay, Barakallahu Feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good <clears throat> and success in life. And I believe careful uh, reading of uh, history will confirm that the same reason of the Khilafah, you know, in the past during time of uh, what do you call the, the Umayyad and the Abbasid, and then, and then you have the, the, the Ottoman Empire, and you go back even to the non-Muslim empires, you know, you see the same reason why they're falling. I mean, you see the reason why they're falling is the same. Political issues, separation, differences, you know, <clears throat> everyone is wanting the junior to be in his side, his opinion to be followed, things to be done in the way he was, and the enemy of that Khilafah or the empire is there influencing these uh, differences? That's why they were they were they were they were gone. I was reading the history of uh, uh, northern Nigeria when the colonizers arrived. They used to fight. They have two empires: empire in in the state uh, called Sokoto and the empire in Borno State. They used to be really enemy of each other. They used to fight each other. They had so many battles. But when they hear about the enemy, you know, the colonizers are coming. You know, they reach the southern part of the country. When they hear about that, they forgot their differences. They, 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 they formed that big unity among, some, among themselves, you know. And that delayed the colonizers for almost 40 years to reach the place. They couldn't reach the place for 40 years. That's just the importance of unity. They forgot, you know, their differences. They realized that we shouldn't do this. We come and forget our differences. Those one are, uh, I mean, personal matters, we should keep them aside. That's the reason why Allah SWT says, Is it necessary for us to have the Khilafah for the unity to be maintained? Not at all. Not at all. 
the 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 OIC, the, I see them just like the parliamental. Uh, I mean, the, the parliament we have in the country. These are just politicians sitting there. You know, they are thinking about what benefits the country. But unfortunately, in most instances, we forgot the unity between them and the community. So that's why the decision will come. The community have their own differences. So Tarbia is needed. I do believe even without the Khilafah, within the territory we are living in, we can maintain the unity and the, we will be very strong and the enemy can never be able to defeat us. If I'm not able to, I mean, uh, keep the differences between me and my friends away, not even friends, even I, I, I cannot, you know, keep the differences away between me and my family members, you know, how am I thinking about somebody from amongst the Khulafa who will come and establish the Khilafah to unite us? So that's why I like the idea that says Khilafah starts from ourselves first. We have to establish the Khilafah in ourselves, then the real one will come. One of the scholars said, Kamatakunu you will lie. Your leaders are reflections of our own attitude. If every Muslim is going to fix himself, everyone fix himself. I shouldn't point at anyone. You know, nowadays we point at the authority, we point at this and that. I'm not saying they are, they are I mean, infallible, they're not doing something wrong, or well, they are, they are human beings, made with mistakes like anybody else. But why can't I focus on my mistakes? You know? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, well, what's the Ahu Baitu? You know, I have so many problems, fix them first before you point your finger at somebody else. We curse, we do all of these things, but at the same time also I have my participation in destroying the, the community because whenever I commit sin, I'm participating in, this, in destroying the community. So we're talking about the unity. I should establish the unity within my community first and Allah SWT will establish it for me at the bigger, bigger level. The Khilafah is going to come by itself. Whether I look for it or I don't look for it, the best way to look for it is righteousness and maintaining the respect between me and my Muslim brothers and sisters wherever they are. I shouldn't say that Unity can only arrive when the Khilafah of Islam is back. It's why we don't know when it's going to be back. And if this is my attitude, that means unity will never exist among the Muslims. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the righteous predecessors, they did not establish the unity with the Khilafah. They established the unity with those principles. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used principles and maxims. And the Sharia of Allah wanted to unite the believers. They have less resources, way lesser than what we have but they're 100% united. You know, that enmity and hatred was taken away from them. Let us have this first, because this is within my affordability. I can do it. I can smile, it's free of charge. I can say salam to my Muslim brothers and sisters. I can forgive when he did something wrong and he apologized, I can forgive. So let's start with this first and see to what uh, a situation at last winter is going to take us. So basically what I'm trying to say uh, is that I do believe that unity is possible without the Khilafah. Uh, uh, we need the Khilafah to come back, but how to establish the Khilafah? It is not based on the way we see it nowadays. People selecting themselves in an isolated area, claiming that they are the Khilafah, they are this and that, and we already know uh, all of these things, so I don't need to, to talk about it. The real Khilafah is all about me fixing myself, you fixing yourself, doing uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu precisely, then the Khilafah at the bigger page will be established. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in uh, Surah to uh, Al-Nur, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا السَّعَى وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا السَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَ لِي لَا يَشْرِكُونَ بِشَيْءٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he promised the believers that he is going to grant them the khilafah. It's, it's essential. He says he is going to grant them the khilafah. Who is going to bring the khilafah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will give them the khilafah. And he will give them the strength and the power. They will take the lead in the way they used to take the lead uh, on, 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 on earth. He says, And Islam is going to be the greatest religion and the most powerful religion. Allah promised us this. But what are we supposed to be doing to get this? Very simple. As I always say, very simple. He said, To worship me without associating partner with me. And worshiping Allah doesn't mean 
confining yourself in the masjid is a very comprehensive concept, which means everything in this life is included. The way you behave, the way you talk, the way you speak is part of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way you treat the Muslims, whoever they are, regardless of their nature, the colors, the races, languages, you shouldn't care about this. Wallahi, the moment the Muslims started focusing on this, then they will fail. The Prophet sallallahu found the Muslim commun uh, the community, the Arabian community in, in Medina was busy with this. This one's from this tribe, this one's from this nation. The Prophet sallallahu told them, all of these things are useless and Muslim aful Muslim. He said, Muslim is a, Mus is a brother of a Muslim. And he said, the Muslim with another Muslim, they are just like one building. If one part of it is suffering, the other part will be also suffering at the same time. Are we like this nowadays? No, but we always call upon the Khilafah. How is it possible for the Khilafah to come whereby I don't respect you, you don't respect me. You know, I always see you with deficiency. You know, I don't respect your opinion. You don't respect my opinion. I don't try to guide you. I don't try to advise you. You don't try to advise me. You are looking for my mistakes and errors. You are just waiting for the time to take revenge. I'm waiting for a time to take revenge. How is it possible for the Khilafah to be established? We're away from the conditions and Allah SWT is very straightforward in this regard, always like that. These are the conditions, you fulfill them, you get the results. So what is the condition for the Khilafah to come? Islam, the practice of the Sunnah, following the Quran, and brotherhood and sisterhood amongst the Muslims, it should be based on these two things, Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Then the Khilafah will come back the evening of Wahid al-Ahad, inshallah. Allah grant this good. Jazakumullah khair, Doctor. Okay. I, I, actually, there, there's some interesting questions uh, keep on coming. Uh, I, I, I hope I can uh, get everything to you. Uh, all right. The next one is, um, okay, this is something what we do usually, you know, we do grouping and teaming, right? So it's kind of grouping and teaming, uh, sometimes it could lead to some improvement, like a kind of competition among people, you know, among countries. Sometimes we have different nationalities we compete each other. But what if this kind of uh, teaming and grouping uh, could lead to disunity between outside the group? So how, what, what, what are the rules to follow, the principles to follow, not to become aggressively disunited? Somebody was right, one of the scholars, when he said, any group or affiliation to organization or channel or whatever, that lets you to see your brother as somebody who is different from you, you know, or hate your brother. This group is taboot that Allah SWT asks us to stay away from it. Anything that causes disunity among the Muslims is supposed to be rejected completely. And it shows that we don't need it at all. We don't need it at all. There is no problem, let's say, uh, you are from a certain uh, state, you know, and you, you happen, you and your uh, 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 I mean, a few brothers and, and sisters, you happen to find yourself in a place and you unite yourself because you understand your need. You know? There's nothing wrong with this at all. But the problem lies when you start looking at other others different from you, when you start disrespecting others, when you start rejecting the rights of others just to protect the interest of yourself and the people who are affiliated to your own community. But having these type of groups, there is no problem in it. It helps you know, a person to uh, seek the support from somebody who understands him better. But it shouldn't be at the expense of the unity of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That, that, that grouping should be based on uh, the unity in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever the unity in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam starts to get affected, that unity has to be, has to be cast away. It has to be rejected and thrown. <coughs> Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us. And this is a very good question because I see I see this, you know, a lot. I see this a lot. You know, I study in the Islamic University of Medina where every every community have their own group, you know. And you can see the separation, you know, uh, among themselves, you know. Uh, from the same university, but this community doesn't tolerate this. And that, that community also doesn't tolerate this. And these are supposed to be students of knowledge, you know. These are supposed to be those who go back and guide others, you know. And tomorrow you will go and tell people to unite themselves and you couldn't even maintain the unity between you and your other brother just because he is not from your state and just because he is not from your country, just because he doesn't speak your language or he doesn't look like you. And tomorrow you will talk about the unity. So it starts from the beginning, you know. So the last one to the grant is good. As I said, it's a very good question, but uh, my answer is very simple. Any, any grouping 
uh, organization that caused you to disrespect other Muslims, that organization should be should be rejected. As long as you believe that this person is Muslim, he deserves your respect. And you cannot harm him with your tongue. You cannot harm him with your, with your hand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Thank you. Okay, the next question, again, another interesting question. Uh, this is actually relate to what you uh, quoted from Imam Malik. Illa bima shaluha bihi awwaluhu. Also, Prophet Sallallahu said, Khairul Quruni Qarni Ismalladin Yadunahum Ismalladin Yadunahum. I think the answer to this question, I think, will clear a lot of misconception. Uh, so the question is, um, the early generation, the companions, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een and the Taba Tabi'een, they were the best among all of us. They were the Khairul Qurun. Um, if the division happened after Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu, Khalifa number four, uh, they've been divided into, uh, you know, Muhaviya and Ali become Sham and then become Medina to Khilafah at the same time. And then, you know, the birth of the Umayyah came after that. So now the question is, um, if best of the best can divide themselves, what about us? Uh, how to compare us to them? So that does, uh, I think that could be the question of the day. <laughs> that will be, uh, it is actually totally different. Yeah. If you look at the history and you study the correct history that talks about the division between Ali and Muawiyah, it wasn't based on the dunya. Muawiyah and Talha and Az Zubayr, they are all looking for the right of Uthman. Ali also was looking for the right of Uthman. Both of them are trying to preserve the right of Uthman, but in their own different ways. Ali did not agree with the way uh, Muawiyah is, is, is doing, and Muawiyah did not agree. Uh, with the way Ali, with the approach Ali is having. Both of them are making ijtihad, trying to reach a conclusion. That's why there is a very excellent uh, 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 mention, you know, even, even uh, I, I guess Sheikh Lusab bin Taymiyyah mentioned this, he says, all of them, Ali bin Abi Talib, Talha, Muawiyah, the love amongst them was so great. There was even some narrations, which we, I, I don't say they're, they're confirmed, but they even mentioned to us that during the battles, when the prayer time arrives, they was when they stop. If they tell Maui to pray as an imam, he would tell them no. Ali bin Abi Talib is the Khalifa. He just uh, disagreed to 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 give him the allegiance because of the case of Uthman Rabi Allah. That's why during the Battle of Safin in the Subhanallah, they were almost going to be united because Ali bin Abi Talib and Muawiyah um, they all agree, you know, to come and reconcile among themselves. But the enemy of Islam, those people who are the assassins of Uthman, they knew that if unity takes place between Ali bin Abi Talib and Muawiyah, they were in trouble. That's why in the same night, they went and attacked Ali bin Abi Talib and attacked Muawiyah so that the, the battle will take place. And we lost so many companions of the Prophet Allah, so as well as the rest of the believers. So we have to look at the difference that took place between the companions of the Prophet Allah, they don't hate each other, they support that's why they have also uh, something they mentioned in history, although some scholars said uh, it is doubtful, but they mentioned that one of the kings, you know, one of the, the, non, uh, the, the enemies was trying to cooperate with Muawiyah against Ali bin Abi Talib. And Muawiyah told him, you shouldn't be deceived by the problems between me and my brother, he said. You shouldn't be deceived by the, uh, by the problem that is taking place and the conflict between me and my brother. If you attack him, I will be the first person to get rid of you. SubhanAllah. There was no record that they used to plot against each other. They fight looking for the right of Uthman, trying to preserve it, doing their own ijtihad. That's why the scholars said both of them are doing ijtihad. The one who is right got two rewards, and the one who is wrong got one reward. And there is no blame uh, I mean, uh, against anyone. Come to our differences. Our differences are not based on this. They are two different matters. Either differences are taking place because of the dunya, or the differences are taking place because of the ignorance, or the differences are taking place because of affiliating ourselves to other scholars who are having nothing except enmity against the other scholars. You know, they are fighting each other and they want to transfer it to the community also themselves. That's why we need for. But I said in the first part of my, my, my speech that having differences amongst the Muslims, this one will remain. 
will not finish. Allah SWT says, وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَ uh, I'm sorry. Allah SWT says, وَلَا يَسَلُ الْمُخْتَلِفِينَ You will never find them, uh, I mean, they will keep on having these differences. But this is not the issue. The issue is when we have the differences, do we tolerate each other? Do we understand each other? Do we act as a source of guidance uh, to each other? Do we respect each other? Do we hate each other? This is the main differences, uh, difference between us and the companions of the Prophet They have the differences among themselves, even in the presence of the Prophet وسلم, but they do not hate, hate each other. They respect everyone. But we, when we have the differences, we hate each other. I don't say salam to you. You know that there are, there are people just because you don't do the jizzat al istirah. They don't say salam to you. you know, Wallah, we live with these people. You know, just because you don't do the jizzat al istirah, they don't say salam to you. I met a person in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was just sitting down in that masjid. A person came, I guess, from uh, Pakistan or uh, India. It looked like uh, somebody who's from that place. He just came to the masjid and sit there. Another person who is next to him from another country, he shouted at him just like that. He said, brother, stand up and pray. And that was after Asr. I was like, okay, yeah, he says alarm to him at, at least, you know. But no salam, no anything. And he was shouting at him and telling him that you are wrong. And the man doesn't know what this guy is talking about. What is so difficult if you go to him? Although, yeah, the opinion that I, I, I take is the same as the opinion of that person who sit down that after Asr, you shouldn't pray. You know, when you, you shouldn't pray after Asr. Omar used to beat people when they pray after Salat and Asr, they pray the Sunnah. That person was right. You know, although there are some opinions which says if you have the watch of suburb, you can pray. But at least if you think that, that this person is wrong, what's so difficult? You go to him and say salam to him, sit down with him, shake his hand, and then talk to him in a nice way. You know? Somebody saw a person doing something wrong. SubhanAllah, one of our scholars, he went to him and he told him, brother, and he, he shake his hand first and say salam to him and talk to him in a nice way. SubhanAllah. That man appreciated it. And you know what he told him? He said, Sheikh. Wallahi, this is the first time I heard this in my life that I cannot do this. People are like this. So we have to understand this concept properly. Differences in the Ummah is not an issue. But if you let these differences to separate between you and your brother, that difference is called Tawood, which Allah SWT asks you to become kafir with the Tawood. Anything that's separated between you and righteousness is Tawood. Anything, anything that is separated between you and your Muslim brothers and sisters is supposed to be Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Okay. Uh, then I think I have one more question. Um, I think then I will open the floor uh, if there is anything. Uh, directly they can ask uh, so one more question is actually something like um, this is uh, with the issue of uh, palestine the, the recent one i think um, th there could be some problem in this question but i think you can you can identify the issues uh, but the thing is like uh, the muslims uh, alhamdulillah most of the countries they own the resources like oil and everything but, but what is keeping the leaders of muslims not reuniting uh, it in, is, is it not good enough to is is it not good enough to uh, frighten the enemy? Because, you know, we have the oil and everything. Uh, so, okay, please uh, share your thought. <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's, it's actually, if you ask me, okay, I'm not a politician, you know, and, <laughs> and I'm going to give you a very political answer. If you ask me, if you ask me, uh, Sheikh Aslam, I will say the reason is not our leaders, it's us. Because if you take that fact that our leaders, they're the reflections of our attitude and manners. If we are corrupt, and Allah SWT tests us as we're having leaders who are corrupt, you know, if Allah SWT tests us with somebody who we think is corrupt, you know, and that's a reflection of our own attitude. If we want this situation to be fixed, then we have to fix ourselves. Then Allah promised us to fix the situation for us. As long as I fix myself, you fix yourself, and everyone fixes himself, and we fix the community, the leaders are going to be reflecting our nature. And then we will see them doing and taking action, and they will be so brave to take action the way it should be taken. And that problem would not last for a second, because that issue shouldn't last after this moment. 
But as you said, almost all the, lead, the Muslim leaders on earth, they are not taking the action which the community believes should be taken. So what is the solution? Since I'm not part of the politics and I'm not there, and my voice is not going to be heard most likely, and yours also, uh, okay, I don't know about uh, Sheikh Hasna, but uh, my voice is not going to be heard. What is the best thing for me to do is to focus on that which is within my affordability, to fix myself and fix my attitude and to fix the members of the community and to make sure, sure that everyone is, is righteous. Our leaders are going to be reflecting in that nature. They will also copy us the in the life as our death. The last one I promised to make it for us in this way. And then we will see action being taken when issues like this happened in the way everyone will be happy with, inshallah. Yeah, last one I feel like Grant is good and shows the time where we see this country, Palestine, being liberated from, from the enemies and the enemies of everyone. Mashallah. Jazakallah, Dr. Alhamdulillah. I mean, uh, so I think, um, uh, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So I think. Uh, what, what, what we learn, uh, uh, you know, from the talk and comments and the mashallah, very good questions and all. I think the, this is the final uh, question from the uh, senior of the uh, of the kulia. You know, what is the action plan? Uh, what is the action plan? Actually, is, is that is there anything that uh, it's not that easy to tell? But what what should we do? I mean, should we sit down and yeah, make that's... this into action? <laughs> That, that, that's the no, yeah, well, I, I, I believe I believe we should do the right thing. Whatever we believe can support these people, a Muslim should do it. Not to provide and to provoke uh, chaos in the place where you're living in. But we have one which is enough for us. We don't want to create another one. Uh, not to provoke chaos, but everyone should act according to his capability. The one who can support them financially should do that. The one who can support them emotionally should do that. Whatever you can do to support them. And those people who are in the authority, if anyone can go and talk to them, you know, to talk at least harshly, so that those people will know that people are watching and monitoring. I think this is what we should be doing. But I really believe that we shouldn't act, uh, uh, what do you call, in, in the wrong way, in the way we will provoke the chaos in the community wherever we are we're living in. And look at your capability and ability and what you can do. Participate within that, uh, that, that manner. A last matter will uh, value it, inshallah, and we send the support to those people until the time they uh, get to be liberated, inshallah. That's in from the dua. If you cannot support them in any way, dua is always, it was there within your uh, affordability, in the light. And the thing is, uh, Palestine is not next to the door. That you can just go and say to these people, you know, I, I, I have to stop this. It is not like that. You, know, you cannot do it. So I do believe uh, every Muslim should be acting, uh, wisely, you know, smartly, and doing things which uh, is like uh, 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 benefits the Palestinians and also will not provoke the chaos in the community where he lives in. Okay. Uh, Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah grant you good night. Aslam, I, ha I, have, I, have to, I have to, unfortunately, I have to leave. Uh, I have 20 minutes to reach uh, Siri Gombak to catch a shop before okay. five. So, so okay. thank you very much. I don't know how to do okay. that, but okay. I'll try. Okay. I'm so sorry to keep you. Uh, I'm so I know, sorry you to keep you. Keep <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gafur. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay, okay. I, I didn't know that you have to leave early. Otherwise, I could have. I did not tell I'm anyone. So okay, thank you very much for everybody. Okay, <laughs> okay. In that case, uh, uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, everyone here, Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for joining, and uh, you you made this day, uh, Mashallah. So your questions, concerns, and your, you know, all of them uh, until here, until the last minute. Uh, thank you so much for participating participation and you know together with the patients thank you so much jazakumullah khair so let us uh, uh, recite surah al-asr and the tasbih kafara jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum